Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Welcome to the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. Uh, I want to congratulate Michael for the Children's Museum's participation in this. Uh, the Children's Museum, as many of you know, is just a, a very long stone's throw uh, across the canal, so it's about a block and a half from here. I've benefited from the proximity between the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston and the Children's Museum. As my children were growing up, we would frequently wander down to the Children's Museum and uh, take advantage of some of their programs, some of their exhibits. And I would say that it's the one museum that when I told my children that's where we were going, they didn't say, oh, not another museum. So uh, a lot of appreciation for all the good work that the Children's Museum does. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the economic side of early childhood education. And I'm going to start with some points that a very close friend of mine, Art Rolnick, made. I think he's familiar to a number of people in this audience. He's an economist. He was the research director at Minneapolis Fed. And he really started to put a lot of work into thinking about what is the economic rationale for early childhood education. And in many years of having discussions with Art, there were two observations that really resonated with me. The first was that if you help someone early in life, you reap benefits through a very long period of time. So getting involved early in a child's life can make a real big difference. The second observation that Art would focus on was that there was really high return to this investment, not only for the individual, but for society more generally. So Art was one of the many pioneers who actually, I think, started really focusing on the economic benefits. And that's really served us well. I think there's been a lot of very good economic empirical work highlighting the importance of early childhood education. And that work, I think, has really helped in the advocacy work that has made a real big difference and is represented by having forums like this where we get such a wonderful turnout. Today I'm going to talk about two things that I think uh, go well with some of the work that Art originally did. So Art's original work and the work that many economists did was just that there was a really high return to this kind of investment. So if you were a private equity person and you wanted to make an investment, this was a really pretty good investment. But there's another observation that I think is important to make. And that is educational attainment has a very big impact, not only on your stream of earnings, but the variation of those earnings. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the risks that occur if a child isn't able to get the kind of educational attainment that can be so important. And I think it's particularly relevant given the economic times we're in right now. The second thing that I'm going to highlight is that there's a big difference if you're in a community that is low poverty rate than if you're in a community that's high poverty rate. And I'm going to show a number of slides that are going to indicate why that's so important. The Boston Fed's been doing a lot of work in mid-sized cities. Those mid-sized cities, uh, some of them have been doing very well. Many of them have not been doing so well. We're going to be announcing in another month a project really focused on the mid-sized cities along with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, a number of other funding uh, groups, and we're really looking forward to that work. And this is going to highlight some of the differences here with a focus on educational attainment. But there are lots of other issues in many of these mid-sized cities. So I, I'm an economist, so I like graphs. So you, I'm going to have to subject you to a couple of graphs. But it's very easy graphs to follow. So in this graph, <clears throat> you want to be as low as possible. So it's by educational attainment. And you can see the purple line on the bottom, which is bachelor's degree or higher shows the unemployment rate by educational attainment for a population 25 years and older. And you can see the blue line, which is less than a high school diploma. And you can see, not surprisingly, that the unemployment rate's much higher if you don't have as much educational attainment. But what I want to highlight in is the effect of the Great Recession, which is the shaded period right here. You can see that regardless of educational attainment, the unemployment rate went up quite dramatically. But if you look at that blue line, we went into this recession with an 8% unemployment rate for people with less than a high school education. It peaked at 16%. Just to put that in perspective, that's one in six people unemployed at a point in time if they had less than a high school education. So as you think about a room of this size, and you think about roughly everybody in this column is unemployed, that's the kind of unemployment rate you're talking. Now, if you have a college education, the unemployment rate went up, but it went up from 2 to a little bit above 4%. That's still very unfortunate, 
but it's dramatically different than if you have much less educational attainment. So it highlights that there's a lot of variation in life experiences, partly based on the kind of educational attainment you have. And so the variation in your life outcomes can be affected by how much educational attainment you get early in life. So those early decisions make a big difference for that variation. The Federal Reserve Bank of Boston's been doing a lot of staff work looking at what is the longer run impacts of unemployment rates. And I think it's really important to think about some of those effects. So they, we've done a staff study that look, did a statistical study looking at um, what happens to somebody 10 years after a spell of unemployment. Now, as you can see from this slide, the work shows that 10 years after that spell of unemployment, you're making 16% less than somebody who didn't have that spell of unemployment controlling for all other factors. So there's a lot of persistence in the fact that you don't make the same kind of income. Furthermore, if it's a long duration period of unemployment, more than six months, it's more than 16%. And that affects other things. It affects your wealth accumulation, which includes your ability to retire with a reasonable income. It affects the probability that you're going to get home ownership. So this variation that occurs, if you're more likely to have a spell of unemployment, really has a big impact on life outcomes, particularly the negative tail of a life outcome. So I'll just draw two implications. Since I think a lot about monetary policy, I'll start with the monetary policy implication. And that is there's a lot of persistence from periods of high unemployment. So we should really care about high unemployment. So those of you who follow monetary policy, I've been very concerned about the level and persistence of high unemployment that we've had coming out of this recession. One of the reasons why I've been advocating for a very aggressive monetary policy. But more apropos to this uh, conference is that High unemployment rates have a big impact on individuals' ability to have a home, have a big impact on whether they have wealth accumulation, have a big impact on their stream of earnings. So we not only care about a good expected return, we care about that variation in the return, particularly that bottom tail of that variation. And educational attainment makes a big difference for that. And I would highlight that many of these programs are being impacted by the current budget austerity that we're facing uh, federally and in many states. What I'm going to do is just go through a number of charts very quickly that highlight their very big differences in educational outcome at different stages in people's life based on whether they're in a high poverty city or whether they're in a low poverty city, and I'm going to focus on Massachusetts. And what it highlights is that educational attainment is persistently in the data from the time that you're three or four, if you're in a high poverty versus low poverty, right through whether or not you graduate from high school. So let me just briefly go through these charts. So on the left side are the low poverty cities. So I've just picked the, the lowest poverty cities in Massachusetts. These are all mid-sized cities. The right side looks at the high poverty cities. You can see that this is looking at the share of children under five years old living below the poverty line. So if you're in a low poverty city, you're talking about dramatically less than 20%. If you're in a high poverty city, in four out of five of those cities, you're talking about more than 40%. So as you think about this, I'm gonna keep going through the charts and you're gonna see that this pattern actually persists. So first look at the share of children three and four years old enrolled in school. The left panel shows that if you're in a low poverty city, that roughly, roughly 60%, um, are enrolled in school. If you go to the high poverty cities, it's substantially less. You can see that it's much closer to around 40%, roughly a 20% differential. Turning to the MCAS scores, we spend a lot of time testing our children. What happens if you're in a high poverty versus a low poverty city? The upper panel looks at reading, the lower panel looks at mathematics. Low poverty cities on the left, in terms of the share of students scoring proficient or higher on the MPAS, you can see that um, most it congregates at 60% or above if you're in a low poverty area. If you're in a high poverty area, it's 40% or below. If you look at the math rates, you can see once again that you do much better if you're in a low poverty city than if you're in a high poverty city. Again, at least a 20% differential between 
outcomes depending on whether you're in a high or a low poverty city. Going to high school graduation rates, this tends to be where we spend a lot of time focusing. Again, low poverty, uh, much higher graduation rate than if you're in a high poverty city. So just to conclude, poverty really matters in a number of ways for these kids. There are a lot of obstacles if you live in a place where there is a lot of poverty. But in particular, educational attainment, we think of our country as a country where educational attainment is available to everybody. But I think what these slides highlight is we have a long way to go if we're really going to get that for everybody. The work of this conference, I think, is really important if we really want all children to succeed. And finally, I do want to highlight on a positive note, economists tend to be downers to start off a discussion. But there has been some good news in Massachusetts, and that is that Massachusetts public kindergarten students and full-day programs has increased dramatically. That's a result of policy advocacy by many people in this room, and also the hard work of many people who are going to be speakers today. So I think there is a good story to tell that conferences like this are making a difference in the way that we're spending both public money and nonprofit money and private foundation money. But we have, as my slides highlight, a long way to go. So thank you very much, and good luck. <laughs>